Now today I'm joined by these fine gentlemen. We have Chris from Nature Here and Now, and we have Harrison and Evan from the Wildlife Brothers, and we are poking around in Pennsylvania at night looking for all sorts of unique invertebrate life. You'll have like five of these feeding on a, a snail or something, and it might not even feel that it's being eaten alive. Oh, I'm trying to keep her in frame for you guys. Look at that. Oh, amazing spider right here. Check out the coloration on that guy. Beautiful little invertebrate. And now we'll return him to his moist home. We found these reddish brown stag beetles, which I know are a favorite of yours, Jack. Absolutely. All right, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now today I'm joined by these fine gentlemen. We have Chris from Nature Here and Now, and we have Harrison and Evan from the Wildlife Brothers, and we are poking around in Pennsylvania at night looking for all sorts of unique invertebrate life. What do you think we might find today, guys? Glow worms. Glow, glow worms? Glow worms and, and camel crickets. Glow worms oh, yeah. and camel crickets, that's probably a good bet. Anything I'm else? I'm hoping for some big beetles, lots wow. of cool beetles moving around yep. here in the summer, so we'll see what we can get. For Definitely. sure. I'm hoping we find a wealth of biodiversity, and I'm hoping we find some interesting stuff that maybe you guys have never seen before. So without a doubt, we are ready to get on the right foot and head out hiking in this beautiful wood at night. Hopefully we find a wealth of life. Let's oh, do yeah. it. We found these reddish brown stag beetles, which I know are a favorite of yours, Jack. Absolutely. So I just flipped one of these logs and we actually have a pair here. The female is in my hand. You can tell she's a female because of the lacking of those powerful mandibles that we get to see on the male. Yep. And I, of course, have the male. Now we know that those mandibles can deliver a bit of a, a bite, but Absolutely. that is really not, you can see this guy is being super calm. He's walking across my hands and not really giving us any issues. They are just content to be left well enough alone. So that's why we're not gonna hang on to these guys for too, too long, but they are really pretty insects. Absolutely. So you can see where that name comes from. Look at basically their entire body has that reddish brown kind of wine color. And I think they're quite pretty looking uh, beetles. Talk about their diet. Absolutely. Now, as adults, these animals are feeding on all sorts of plant juices, saps, and things like that, sweet kind of liquidy food. And then as larvae, um, these animals prefer kind of a, an earlier stage rot uh, in wood and their larvae, they're huge grubs. They can spend up to a year, sometimes more on other species, just munching away until they pupate and turn into these lovely little beetles. Now, sadly, these adults don't live for very long, so it's really a treat to run into them in the warmer definitely. summer months before they mate, dry up, or get eaten by uh, uh, animals um, that predate on them and then they vanish until the next summer. So, great little find here. I think Absolutely. we'll get these guys back now. Really cool. All right, guys, take a look at this. So this is actually something I was hoping to see. Now, despite its tiny size, this is actually a Lucanid. And forgive me on the common name, but I believe this is called a red rot stag beetle. You can see those teeny tiny little mandibles up front. And an easy way to tell that this is a Lucanid is those telltale little elbowed antenna, which are folded in here, of course, ironically. But take a look at that. That is super awesome. I was really hoping to add some Lucanus species. I mean, Lucanid species to my repertoire on this trip. Of course, a little tick crawling on me. No, thank you. Boink. I was really hoping to add some species of Lucanids to my finds and I'm glad to have found this super tiny but brand new type of Lucanid to our trip. What a cool little beetle. Take a look at this beautiful little green damselfly just resting on this little sapling tree. Oh, is that not a beautiful color? Really nice little damselfly. If you guys want to learn more, da more about damselflies, hop on over to our Ebony Jewel Wing video because we filmed some beautiful damselflies already this year. 
that is, oh, he's cleaning his little eyes. That's a beautiful, beautiful little insect. Oh, check out this beautiful orb weaver. Oh, I'm trying to keep her in frame for you guys. Look at that. Oh, amazing spider right here. Now she's in a stellar spot. Oops, stellar spot because right here, look, she's already caught a little fly. She's right in the middle of the trail. So any flying insects that are flying by just boom, slam right into that intricate orb of a nest, of a web. And that's where they get that name orb weaver from these extensive, spectacular nests that they weave. These are nature's finest insect catchers. Look at the complexity of this beautiful web here. But here she is, if I tap her, yeah, she'll run right back down. Oh, look at that. Beautiful spider, very nice orb weaver. Very pretty. A question I get a lot when people see these gorgeous webs is how do the spiders not get caught in their own silk? Mm -hmm. And the answer is some of these strands here are actually not sticky. So if you see, you may not be able to see the strand itself, but I can actually touch some of them and not really get stuck down. They don't have the same properties as the sticky silk. Just look at that. Look on my finger there. Absolutely. See how that pulls. So she will walk on the smooth strands and have no resistance. But if anything, wow, look at that. There was an insect just flew in there and managed to escape. Oh yeah, because our light is attracting them. We're sentencing them to death. Oh, this, this fly is actually still alive, but caught. See the legs are moving around a bit. But yes, exactly right. She is depositing, you know, little tiny droplets of sticky goop on these strands, you know, as they come out. And this is how she's ensnaring that prey. And then when she feels that vibration, you know, oh, oh, she runs down and throws all this web all over it, entangling the prey further. She bites it, of course, paralyzing and, and starting to dissolve the insides. And then she sucks it all the way back through her fangs. Really, really cool spider. Beautiful, nice orb weaver. And even though, sadly, we got our fingers stuck in some of this web, she'll go right back to repairing and building out this amazing intricate web because this is how she finds her food. I think this is a phanogaster, which is a genus of ant, pretty common in North America. But look at this little front doorway. It's kind of, it yields to pressure a bit, but it looks like they've been using all sorts of little fibers, possibly from fungus, to construct this kind of spongy little doorway into their colony. I've actually never really seen anything like that from this genus, which is really, really interesting. They're really pretty ants. They're kind of, here's, here's a little worker down here. They're kind of a dark, deep red with kind of an orangish abdomen. Here's another one. And they're kind of your regular kind of protein and sugar feeding ants. Um, but uh, they're really common in deciduous woods all across North America, deciduous and mixed growth forests. But I have never seen a little spongy entranceway like this. That is really interesting, really cool, fascinating little um, group of ants and their little colony nest that they've constructed for themselves. So this is the larva uh, of the Lampyridae, you know, group of beetles, which are the fireflies and lightning bugs. Most of them will look like this. And what's really neat is this thing is a pretty intense predator. It will search along in the substrate beneath leaves and logs and bark and stuff for like the trails of slugs and snails. And it can immediately tell once it finds that trail what direction the creator was going to head towards it you know start following down that trail and find the thing creating it and it'll bite them often at their that was interesting okay. at their rear end with these appendages that pierce it and inject this venom that can sometimes paralyze them but it numbs it um, what's interesting is at times you'll have like five of these feeding on a, a snail or something and it might not even feel that it's being eaten alive 
and uh, they're just really, really cool. They have uh, lamps that produce light different from their adult you know, stage because they'll stay lit for about 20 seconds at a time. And it's really beautiful. They have these two chemicals, luciferin and luciferase. And luciferous is like this enzyme that triggers light when it combines with the luciferin, oxygen, and something in all living creatures on earth called ATP. And uh, it's actually uh, almost a 100% cold light where our light bulbs are like 10% light, 90% heat. If these things did that, they would cook themselves to death. It's a really incredible species. I, I really enjoy these. Uh, and something that's really weird about them, and I've never been able to figure out what's going on, is when they're walking along, see how it's putting its little, the tip of its abdomen down mm -hmm. as it's going along? Every like quarter inch or so, it'll leave this little droplet of moisture. And I've Googled, I've asked tons of people, no one has any idea what that's for. That is interesting because that's exactly what we observed in a much larger cousin in the trilobite beetles in Borneo, is they would almost use like an anal pad to kind of prod along almost like a caterpillar in motion. And they would also kind of leave a little a little butt stamp. Uh, but it was really cool. These, these are essentially um, tiny little versions of those trilobite beetles, They're very similar in structure and uh, closely related, uh, those two little groups of beetles. But look at that. That's pretty cool. And of course, like the adults, they use their bioluminescence to mate, kind of like insect Morse code, to find each other in the dark. But originally, and of course in this stage, it's not to reproduce, it's to warn predators, I don't taste good. If this is a Photinus, uh -huh. you know, species, uh -huh. it's Lusa or Lusa bufagens can uh -huh. actually kill a bird or something that eats it. In fact, oh, one wow. of these, just one, Firefly uh -huh. can kill a bearded dragon, whereas wow. a human, it would take about 20 of them if we ate it. That is wild. Yeah, that's that crazy? crazy. Those are, that's so pretty toxic. For Taurus, will actually prey on Photinus. Uh -huh. And I could talk about that all night long, <laughs> what they do, but um, to, to gain those lucibufagens, uh -huh. and then she will pass those toxins on to her eggs and offspring. Wow. So the eggs will stay lit the entire time. They never turn off. That's just to warn crazy. Predators. That's awesome. Cool? I know, eat it. <laughs> Throw them right back under here. All right, guys, take a look at what I just found under this log. This is a really nice, big staphylinid rove beetle larva. So these are, are primarily carnivorous, and they're feeding on usually the larvae of other insects. And a lot of these really nice rove beetles are really sneaky about where they leave their larva. They'll actually show up on dead animals or rotting fungi and they will deposit their eggs there not to feed on the dead animals or rotting larvae i mean or rotting fungi but the larvae of other insects that are attracted to decomposing those things so they're a really interesting little group and in fact the adults have a really cool method of kind of folding their wings back up underneath their elytra uh, so they kind of do this little wiggly butt dance where they kind of move their butt around like that and fold their wings back into their elytra after they fly. But how cool and gnarly is that little larva? Is that not ridiculously cool? Awesome. Take a look at these fascinating little orthopterans. These are cave crickets or camel crickets. And you see where they get that name. They Oh, that one jumped away. They've got that big kind of hump. Oh, that one jumped away too. Here's another one. This tree is loaded with them. As you can see, they're quite shy of the light and they're quite large orthopterans, but they're really, really interesting. And they're a very cool group related to katydids, crickets, grasshoppers, and all that jazz. Very long antenna as they normally are inhabiting. Whoop, oh, there it goes. Very dark, secluded areas. That's super cool. Are there any more? Yep, Oops. one right there. Oh yeah, yeah, there's another one. Yeah. Numero. Quattro. We have a tendency to see this species in human uh, settlements, houses especially, basements and sheds. Dark, so, cool areas these guys will hang out in during the day. And I personally love them, but if you're not expecting to see <laughs> an insect of this size and it 
pops right out in your face in like a shed or something, they, they can give you the heebie-jeebies for sure. And they Absolutely. are highly gregarious, or at least yes. this species is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll see them in incredible numbers. Ooh. We've seen upwards of easily 50 in one shed. And um, they are just absolutely wild looking units. That is cool. Yeah. Take a look right here, folks. This is a smaller kind of Stapelinid rove beetle. A nice little black one. Oh my gosh. Feel freaking sit still. Look at that. And so this is actually a beetle. You wouldn't think that this is a beetle, but you can see that kind of similar head shape there. And then right after the thorax, that little node, that pronotum, you can see that little kind of vest looking component. That's actually their elytra and their wings are actually folded up in there. Their wings kind of like get folded in half and tucked into that kind of little little vest. But look at that, a really cool staphylinid. So that's the adult stage. This is the adult stage. I don't think of that other uh, larva. I think that was um, a larger species, but this is an adult uh, rove beetle of a different species, absolutely. That's cool, man. Look at that, beautiful, very quick, very attentive. And these are in the family uh, Staphylinidae. Awesome. Cool. Oh, wow. Check this out, guys. Little Lysidae, I believe. And these look exactly like male trilobite beetles, uh, which is super, super cool. And in fact, um, these are exactly what those trilobite beetles are. It's just that those females are stuck in a permanent kind of larval stage. But this looks to be, I think two, I think there's one tucked up underneath the elytra of this one, perhaps courting or mating. So we caught them in a bit of a sensitive time, but beautiful, beautiful little insects. Well, we had a great time. We found a ton of really cool stuff, including some lifers for me, uh, specifically that really cool little stag beetle. Actually, I was really excited to find that. Uh, but we found we found those those glowworms. We found plenty of camel crickets, and we found some really cool little beetles, some rove beetles and stuff. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, buy the new merchandise. Uh, turn on post notifications so you don't miss anything. Join our channel memberships for exclusive behind the scenes content. <gasps> And above all, please subscribe to these wonderful gentlemen's channels. I'm going to have all of their channels attached in the link below. They've been super knowledgeable, super helpful while we've been on our trip here in Pennsylvania. And we wouldn't have been able to bring any of this really cool content to you guys without these wonderful men. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and our pleasure. Absolutely. And thank you guys so much for watching Jack's World of Wildlife. Be sure to tune in next time for the next episode.